Hey, it's Jordan with TYT, TYT Network. We're here in the uh, spin room where everybody's spinned out. I'm here with McKay Coppins, who I take uh, airplanes with from time to time, BuzzFeed uh, politics editor. You've been at all these debates. What do you think about tonight? Um, I think that, that honestly, there, we've reached the point where the debates are not making a difference at all. We're not, you know, making up any new ground in terms of learning about the policy positions of these candidates. No one is making moves that would actually change voters' minds. I, you know, Trump said right after this debate that he thinks he's done with debates uh, and that that might be the first thing that Donald Trump has said this entire uh, campaign that I agree with <laughs> I don't know that we're really getting anything out of it anymore do you find it odd that uh, CNN didn't actually ask him about his campaign manager reportedly throwing down a journalist because you would yeah. think journalist that would be kind of towards the top of the list well I can tell you that uh, that I and, and many of my colleagues immediately after uh, the debate were shouting that question at Donald Trump uh, just now right over there and uh, he ignored us several times and finally said oh the Secret Service said nothing happened right. which I don't believe I will wait for the Secret Service's comment on that I think it's strange I mean I think that that question should have been asked uh, uh, you know, who knows why they didn't ask it. They did ask about the the black protester who was punched at one of his rallies and generally about the, the pattern of violence, which I think is very troubling in the in the Trump campaign and at his rallies. But yeah, I would have liked to hear about that. I think that that's an important issue and I think reporters should keep asking about it. And uh, you wrote a book, I know part of the title, Wilderness, and it's about the uh, Republican war. Okay, what's the title? Uh, the Wilderness, the subtitle is 47 words long. Uh, uh, deep inside, the Republican Party's combat a contentious, chaotic quest to take back the White House. Still in bookstores at Amazon. Um, now, you have a lot of sources in the Republican side. Is their heads exploding or they're coming to their Jesus moment on no, Trump? Oh, no, no. The heads are exploding. We're, we're still in the panic stage as far as I can tell. The, uh, the Republican establishment is uh, going through their stages of grief. I think they're still in... They've, I think they've moved past denial. Uh, and I don't know if panic is a normal stage of grief, but I think that's where they are now. I literally just talked to a, an establishment Republican source who's in the Never Trump camp who... Uh, <laughs> who said right after the debate, he said, I need to get out of here before people start asking my opinion because it just doesn't matter anymore. Uh, so people people are getting pretty depressed. Uh, I think that you're going to keep hearing talk about a contested convention. I think that there will be a serious floor fight, and that might end up being the moment that the permanent fracturing of the Republican Party occurs. And do you think with uh, the media, I mean, the Young Turks has been fairly critical of CNN, MSNBC, for pretty much, I mean, giving this guy carte blanche, free media, eight months. Um, also, a bit of when he makes, I would say, uh, racial demagoguery, uh, kind of just moving on to the next question. Yeah. Uh, I know, you know, I'm not asking you to attack the media, but no, no, no. do you think that there's an element where this has been kind of produced and brought to you by CNN, MSNBC? I do think one weird tick is how all the cable networks, uh, and this isn't specific to anyone, but immediately after the debate, every time they go to a an interview with Donald Trump, which is a pretty big advantage for him because they interview the other candidates later, but right after the debate is when viewers are still watching, right? And yeah, of course, they, they you know, he gets softball questions. I mean, look, I think- You think that's because he's rating so yeah, well? I mean, look, that's the reality. Like these media companies are facing the reality reality that he's incredibly good for re for ratings incredibly good for traffic incredibly good for business and uh, they're they're grappling with how to balance that the financial incentive the ratings incentive with their journalistic uh, duty to hold his feet to the fire the other thing is that look every presidential candidate on both sides gets uh, gets softball interviews they get you know soft focus profiles but Donald Trump isn't like every other presidential candidate I really think that that's an important thing that we need to realize that he is saying and doing things that are completely unheard of in normal campaign discourse. And I don't think that, ca that, that media outlets should feel content to just continue to treat him like any other candidate. He's, he's just not. I think it actually took new levels the other night when Bernie Sanders, a lot of people said, had like the biggest upset in many, many years. And when I was watching the shows, they led with that, but it was very short. And then it was 
Trump's wins in Michigan and Mississippi for 45 minutes. You would think that Bernie Sanders like was only down by a point and you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, well, to be fair though, Donald Trump is on is on the march to the nomination. Bernie Sanders is still a long shot for the Democratic nomination. I agree with you though. I mean, look, the reality is that saying Donald Trump's name at the top of a, a newscast, putting his name in a headline, it guarantees you more readers or viewers, uh, more attention, right? And, and they know that. I mean, there's a reason that Donald Trump's rallies are getting aired in their entirety on, on multiple cable networks. It's because they're entertaining, because they're fun to watch, and frankly, because he makes news in all of them. And, and that's not normal for presidential candidates who usually give the same formulaic speech every single day, right? So look, I don't know what the answer to this is. You, you know, I, I would say that you should. We need to pull back on the coverage. I think we need to treat him uh, with the seriousness that he deserves. But at this point, I don't know how much of a difference it'll make. The question I have going into the general election is: Let's say it's Trump versus Hillary Clinton. Are are, are the networks going to continue to broadcast Trump's entire uh, rallies live? A and are they going to do the same for Hillary Clinton? Because well, I'm sure he's going to say something different about Hillary well, each one. And that's what I mean. I mean, it's one thing when you're in a field of 14 candidates and there are obviously some that are more serious than others. It's a different thing when it's head to head and you can count up the number of minutes or hours that are spent on each candidate. I don't. I mean, I think that the Clinton campaign is going to have a, uh, a lot of problems with the way that this campaign is covered uh, and a lot of them might be uh, valid. And uh, can you drop the curtain uh, on your own reporting and being on the campaign trail? I won't give away too much of your personal life, but it's people don't realize this is like a pretty taxing, relentless uh, sweat through 120 degree rooms, uh, you know, secret bar meetings, all this. I'm, I'm holding my five hour energy yeah. here. Uh, which I became addicted to in the 2012 campaign and then saw a bunch of articles about people dying from it and I stopped drinking them and then I've recently had to start drinking them again. Yeah, it's I mean, look, it's like kind of, there are a lot of, a lot of it is kind of like a joyless slog. <laughs> um, but also, I mean, look, like it, it's a fun job. Like this is the reality, like there are a lot of jobs that are mind-numbingly boring and this is not one of them. And so I'm not going to complain about my job. I'm happy about my job. Uh, but yeah, it's hard. I mean, if, do you find that you have to like multi, triple, quadruple task and with family? Uh, yeah, that I think the big, the hardest part for me is that I have two young kids, a three-year-old and a one-year-old, and uh, I don't get to see them very much, and they are not. I actually, my cameraman, my cameraman's kid is a few months old. I, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're here with us instead. I, I the other day I was on the phone with my three-year-old girl, and she, and I was in Las Vegas, I think, and I was on the phone with her, and she said, "Are you still in Iowa?" <laughs> Which was kind of like a depressing moment where <laughs> I hadn't seen her for that long. So uh, luckily, I think after Tuesday things are going to slow down, and I'm going to go back home. But yeah, it's. I mean, it's brutal. I, I have to say, it gives me some respect for uh, the candidates who go through this because they they have to do this plus give speeches multiple times a day, which is incredibly difficult.